Today, we're going to focus on finishing the Solo scope primarily, but these there's not many pieces, so we'll probably end up doing the whole blaster. There are a couple of really interesting techniques with this, um, some that I really enjoy. Uh, it, it's, it's going to be an interesting ride, so let's get to it. Let's start with the first piece, which is the scope. So everything has been sanded and primed, and it's beautifully smooth. Spot putty. I absolutely love that stuff. We've got these two main pieces of the tube, and we're going to use graphite powder. It's just standard graphite powder. This is garbage clear. I This stuff takes forever to dry, and it's kind of cold in here, so we're going to use both of those to our advantage. A garbage chip brush. I think I'm going to replace that one. I got another one. Let me grab it. I picked up a couple of cheap chip brushes just for this. A lot of people finish everything and then add graphite powder on top of it. I'm not overly fond of that technique. Um, I much prefer to add the graphite powder right away when we do the clear. Let me uh, let me get everything set up. We'll get in a little closer and I'll show you exactly what I'm doing. Here's what I got, right? This is the uh, the end of the barrel. All we're gonna do we're gonna spray this with clear nice light even coat while it is still wet we're just gonna dump the graphite powder all over dry spots more graphite powder lightly brush the graphite powder is going to dry the, the clear paint first off my oh, bunched a hair too late on that but the clear is going to act like a uh, mm, how do you describe this it, it, it's like using um, cold casting with resin it's the exact same process, right? So now we just let that dry. That's going to look fantastic when it's done. The scope's a little darker than everything, so we get to do weird things with the scope. Well, I didn't say weird, but you know. You know. When you apply um, graphite on top, once everything has been done, it's not really permanent. We're going to do the exact same thing with the back half of the scope. So clear coat. I'm doing it off camera so I don't have to uh, worry about everything. And then just dump it on. Keep rotating. Like I said, it's a little cold in here which is going to work to our advantage because the uh, clear is going to cure slower, which gives us time to apply everything and manipulate. All right, now we're going to leave this, let it fully cure. We're going to give it a couple hours as we move on to other parts. Oh, cleanup. What am I doing? I'm using a... This tray is for drywall. Or not drywall. Um, wallpaper. Sorry, wallpaper. It's a nice, just, just a large trough. It's easy to uh, put everything in. And it's got a nice corner. We can just dump everything that we haven't used all over our hands. That's important. And then back into the jar. Don't wipe that off. Go off, blow it off. If you try wiping, it's just going to smear, and then you're going to have graphite all over your hands. So whenever possible, dust it off, don't wipe it off. And this stuff will get everywhere. So uh, keep that in mind.
Next piece to get finished is the um, dovetail mounting bracket I'm using. What do we got? It's hard to see without glasses. Silver metallic. It's just duplicolor. I'm a big fan of duplicolor products. This is just getting a coating of silver. Maybe. Apparently someone did not clear the tip last time they used it. There we go. I like Duplicolor. Duplicolor uh, dries very fast. It's super effective. And this is just a base coat, so we're going to just cover the whole thing in a nice light layer of silver. We might do two. I don't know. It's getting painted over, but for now, we're going to do silver. And since we have a gray base already, it will, uh, doesn't take much. So we just let that dry. The scope is out of the head long enough to dry now. So we're just going to take a rag, buff it, that's it. I feel it has that same um, gunmetal look you get from older weapons. It's already added all the weathering, and the nice part is it's not going to rub off since it's embedded in the clear. Except for the stuff in the center. But luckily, that gets another piece on top of it. The more you buff, the uh, shinier it'll be. Pretty happy with that. We have a bunch of pieces that need to be silvered. A couple of them need to be glued together. So we're going to stop, take a moment, glue everything that needs to be glued. I'd like to get down to raw PLA if I'm going to be gluing. Makes a better bond. Only takes a second. still fits. It looks pretty snug. That's good. Big bottle of super glue. I go through a lot of it. I don't use activator. I am not fond of activator. I feel it uh, accelerates things more than it should. Glue needs time to do what glue needs to do. Could be completely mistaken. I could absolutely be wrong about that, but I feel that glue needs to have time to do what glue needs to do. So these are done, and I'm very happy with them. Over here. These four pieces... That's brass, that's silver, that's silver, these are brass. These three need to be brassed. All of these can be silvered. So we're just going to wait till the glue dries as soon as it does. I'm going to hit everything with some silver. In fact, I can probably hit these now. So you can watch me horribly paint stuff again. Now this is a base coat. This is going to get um, a treatment on top of it. Why don't I do that? I don't know why not. All right.
luckily this automotive uh, silver dries super quick. When you're spraying, if you have something on a board and your spray moves it, you're spraying too close. dry for a while. Welcome to my 3D printing room. We're in here because there's a heater in here and it's a relatively small room and we're in Chicago ish and it's very cold. So I'm in here just yeah stay warm. This technique is odd. Kim and I found it while uh, researching spirit packs and involves toothpaste. I thought it was weird, and we were laughing about it, and uh, she's working on her uh, spirit pack, and she goes, I'm going to try it. When you stop and think about it, it's no different than frisket, or a, a, a masking fluid, if you're watercolor. It's the same concept, but they're using toothpaste, because toothpaste is readily available, super inexpensive, and does a fantastic job. Which is why we have these pieces, base coated with silver. All you do, toothpick, and you apply weathering wherever you want, or you apply toothpaste wherever you want the silver to shine through, right? Then we're going to hit it with a flat black sandable primer and wash the toothpaste off, and it does fantastic things. It sounds unbelievably stupid. I've heard people go, yeah, you can use diaper cream. Works, but you know, then your prop smells like diaper cream. I suppose that the worst thing I'm experiencing is toothpaste. You know, I should consider myself a bit lucky. So all we do, everywhere we want scratches, put in a little bit of toothpaste. Right, and we're looking at the prop as a prop and the, the places that it would actually hit and get scratched and dinged in it's where I'm primarily focusing right all the corners all the edges keep in mind there's gonna be two knobs everywhere it's probably not gonna be silver under those so let me bring in closer so you can see what I'm doing all right, the light is horrible in here. Yeah. So, a little bit of toothpaste. Don't worry, this is my weathering toothpaste. Everywhere that would have just some texture. The nice thing about doing it this way is you can bring little scratches really easy. You can remove stuff pretty quick. It's an unbelievably interesting technique that I absolutely laughed at and made fun of. Toothpaste. That's stupid. No, no it's not. Leave it to the Ghostbusters, right? I know a lot of us real costumers kind of goof on them a bit, but 
they got some pretty fantastic techniques. Bring in a couple of scratches along. Same thing for the covers. Everywhere we want. A little bit of scratch, a little bit of dings. And unlike most of the stuff we use, you cover your hands in it, it just smells like toothpaste. It's crimbo time. Who doesn't love a little bit of peppermint? I could easily have the reference in front of me right now. And damn near mirror what... They did for the solo blaster which i highly recommend people do always have your reference near you i'm not doing it because i'm an idiot <gasps> no hawk you're yeah no no I, i'm an idiot So this is technique number two. The first one being, of course, the uh, graphite powder. Just a little on this edge just to highlight where they meet up. Now, oh, the knob holder. This is gonna have very little it's gonna have enough. Now, we spray these black. In this case, it's gonna be a flat black. And once it's fully dried, we wash it off and see where we're at. So there we are. You can see how it's starting to do some interesting things in a couple of places. We let it fully dry, fully. Give it like an hour, and then we'll wash it off. So this is my kitchen. I know, lots of, uh, lots of scene changes in this one. It's an exciting episode. I thought I would bring you guys inside to show you the, uh, the reveal when we wash these off. It's kind of cool looking. So uh, let me bring in so you can see my sink. All right, just regular old tap water. All we're doing is washing off the old paint. I let it go a little too long so the paint's a little too dry. So we might have to scrub it a bit. Not a lot. Starting to see that's kind of, ooh, that's nice. So the more paint we wash off at this point, since we have the silver uh, base coat, the more weather we get. I like how that's turning out. Between this and a little bit of dry brushing, this is going to look fantastic. A 
this chipped part here. I'm really happy with how that looks. We'll set that one down to dry. Do the two caps. Same thing. A little bit of water. A little bit of light rubbing. And everything should come right off. Like I said, I waited a little too long, so the uh, toothpaste is sticking a little more than anything else. Once I get it wet, it will uh, rehydrate, pop loose. And I am going to dry brush, maybe rub and buff, we'll see. But there's going to be a little more added on to this. Just for certain highlights I want. And I want to have a real metal sheen to it. Alright, let me keep rubbing these off, cleaning everything up dry it up and then I'll uh, show you where we're at all right so I've got this piece completely dried off and that looks fantastic has the exact look I was going for scratches right where I want it it reads as metal or painted metal that's been chipped same with these nub eh. It's going to have a knob on top, which is going to be brassed anyway, so it doesn't matter that much, but these look really good. Once everything's all together, that's going to look fantastic. All right. We're at a point now where we can start assembling the scope. We can put the um, graphite powdered piece on with these, glue everything up, glue this on, and start brassing a couple things. We're also going to do silver on the, uh, the wheels, so those are going to be super easy to take care of. Before we can get to putting things together, we have three pieces that need to be brassed. Um, they've been primed black. They're the uh, the rings that go on the end of the scope. And then there's the adjuster knob on the top. So right now I'm just gonna gold paint them. I'm using uh, Rust-Oleum Metallic Gold. I'm gonna give them a light dusting I want more of the black to show through than I normally would because um, the, the adjustment knob here has knurling on it and I think with a light dusting of gold it'll look fantastic. So let me take care of that. All right, what we're doing with the flash suppressor. The whole thing has been sprayed silver. I've taped off the muzzle and I'm going to tape off the uh, barrel adapter. The barrel adapter is going to be done in the graphite powder and this part here, the main chunk of it, uh, is just going to be sprayed black. I'm going to weather that with a little bit of dry brushing to bring the silver back out. Uh, but for the most part, we're just going to spray the or tape this off, spray the rest black. We're also spraying the inside of the flash suppressor black. We're now at the part where we can start gluing some of this stuff together. And this is where everything starts coming, well, together. Since we're using super glue. And I will inevitably get some on my hands. Put gloves on now. So let's, uh, let's make sure everything still fits. Feels like it does. I don't mess around when it comes to glue. So I have a big, big container of it. It's just standard CA glue. Nothing special. one. 
All right. So for here, there's there's no real secret. See, I had to glue my hand. It's just gluing slot A into tab B. key is to use less super glue than you think you need. Note, I'm not using activator. Not a big fan of activator. I'm sure it's fine. Just seems like glue should have the time to do whatever it is the glue needs to do. And adding activator kind of uh, nullivates that. It's just my opinion. Absolutely likely to be wrong. But it might not be. So if you noticed, there's no paint in here. I'm going to hand paint that on. Um, that's intentional. That way I know I have a good bonding surface for the PLA to PLA. Close to the back. Starting to look like a thing. I'm pretty happy with it. Alright, I'm going to give this a good 10-15 minutes to let all the super glue do what it needs to do. Um, I might come back by, put a little more in a couple of key spots, clamp things down. I might not. We'll see. Although, can't help it. That is going to look so good together. I'm excited. It's starting to come together. Let things cure. It's had time to dry. So now we're going to dry brush silver all along this. Super easy to do. A million and a half video. I have super glued my paintbrush to my table. I'll grab some, uh, never mind. So there's a couple pieces that need to be dry brushed. I want to dry brush the heat sink so they're still dark on the recesses. That way it reads as metal. It's easier than trying to uh, paint all the insides dark. Now it's done. It's amazing how, how just a couple of quick brush strokes Changes the entire look of a thing. That's a bit much. Luckily it's the top. We can fade into it. I kind of like that. So that I'm very happy with. We let it dry completely because we're going to have to tape it off because we are going to graphite both of these next. Anything else we need to dry brush? Let's do some dry brushing. 
some weathering. I'm trying real hard not to actually modify this so it can still get, you know, used or returned to a normal state if they want. There are a couple places that just use a little bit of weathering. Let's start with this. I want just a touch along this edge here. I'm always amazed at how huge of a difference the smallest bit of weathering does. It's going to be mostly against the body, but we're going to barely read in there. Don't want to overdo it. Bob used to say, Eat up your whole world if you let it. That's good. Let everything dry. The blaster itself wasn't really scratched up or dinged up too badly. And yeah. Let's do some weather on the high points. Things that would normally get scratched up. If you have a good enough reference, you could absolutely make it look 100% like the screen used prop. And it's out there. All the reference you'd want, you just have to know where to look. I do. I'm just not going into that level of detail with this. So it's a lot of diminishing returns. While you're dry brushing, make sure you change the orientation of your brush. That way it's not all going in the same direction. Scratches happen in all different directions. It's not bad. I like that little chip right there. It's kind of nice. Right. Not worried about this rail because it's going to be covered. Since we're here and adding stuff, let's uh, put this flash suppressor on or heat sink, heat sink on. That's starting to look like something. On the uh, actual prop, there's a large disc here that uh, looks like it at one point in time was glued on and then popped off, or they removed it, and it's a very silver circle. I'm trying to add that. But I also want to add it in a way that it looks semi-natural. It's going to go right there. I think I want to put a little more back here. That looks pretty beat. 
It's not bad. I haven't decided whether I'm adding dirt or not. Brown colors and whatnot. That's going to look really good. All right. Still waiting for this. Has to uh, cure so we can graphite the barrel and the or the the barrel and the flash suppressor. But we're going to let this dry. We'll come back to it in a little bit. Everything has been masked off. We do graphite on this one first, and then we'll do graphite on that. I'm just doing this to show you again how I graphite something, which is completely different than how most people do it. Get everything ready. All my mise en place. Again, garbage clear. We're going to spray the whole thing. While it's still wet, we're going to coat it in graphite powder, brush off all the excess, and that should be it. This is a point where a light, delicate hand is way more useful than anything else. All right. We're going to do the same thing on this. And I'm not worried about getting the inside, so I painted it black the first time. I'm just, just for the silver. seem as if I've missed a spot. Now, we just leave it, let it fully dry. I'm going to give that at least two hours. So we're going to glue the barrel onto the body. It's pretty easy, self-explanatory. Although, if you want a good look at that. That turned out fantastic. I'm super happy with all of this. Just a little bit of glue. A little bit of glue. And then Now we let it do its thing. We leave it alone. Let it glue. Because it still wobbles a bit. does not want to glue. It's one of the few times I think maybe a little bit of E6000 would be useful.
We might have to five minute epoxy it. I'm not quite sure yet. Because we are gluing plastic to metal. We'll just let it do its thing for a couple minutes. See if I can line it up so it'll uh, stay on its own. We let it go. Give it some time to cure. So now onto the scope. All I've done is I've taken the, the knurled wheels I 3D printed and I just press fit a cap head screw just you know make it look a little I don't know nicer a little bit of super glue so we're going to glue all three wheels on I'm using the uh, the bolts here as registration marks, Regist alignment pins, as alignment pins. Those are words I meant to use. So, give it a minute. Doesn't take very long. Same thing on the back side. Now for the fun one. This is only really going to be connected on these two points. But this should be more than enough. We may have to five minute epoxy it. If we do, we do. If not, it's not a big deal either. So now we just let it dry or let it cure. Give it a good 10, 15 minutes. See where we're at. We are almost done. The last little bit is just a couple of finishing spots with the paint brushes. There we go. A little more dry brushing. So what I'm about to do, it's going to absolutely destroy this brush. They say you can save them. I've never successfully saved a brush after I've done what I'm about to do. There's a couple spots that need black. I want all my black to match. So I'm going to use spray paint. Spray yourself a little pool. And apply. I'm also using this as a shadow, so I'm kind of uh, packing it in where everything meets on the graphite just to make it seem a little more dirt-like. Solo didn't seem like the type that would take his blaster apart to clean it. There should be a little bit of extra wear and grime in areas like that. Just for things a little harder to match or harder to clean. I think we're done. Then we're going to do a little more dry brushing with the silver and a couple of just small key areas real quick. And uh, like I said, I think we're done. Huh. Let me bring you in, show you a couple of close-ups. We'll wrap this thing up real quick. So here it is. I am super, super happy with how this thing turned out. 
it is gorgeous. I certainly hope it makes the young man very happy. I'm probably going to end up making a stand for it. Didn't take me too terribly long. Um, like I said, I already had the body done. Probably would have doubled the time to do the body as well, but that's actually not a lot of time. This thing is amazing. I'm very happy with it. But that is how you finish a Han Solo blaster. Go be a scoundrel. Make one yourself. We'll see you next time.